Hello again, and welcome back to the Prentice Hall Biology Textbook. Today we'll be covering Chapter 7. So first off, there's going to be two videos. Sec sections 7-1 and 7-2 will be the first one, and 7-3 and 7-4 will be the second one. Okay, Chapter 7, Cell Structure and Function. Uh, section 7-1, Life is Cellular. So early cellular discovery. So cells were discovered with the invention of the microscope, and it was not till the mid 1600s that the sci that scientists used microscopes to observe living things. The first uh, scientist to discover or see cells was Robert Hooke, and he saw cells in a section of cork. So cell theory. So cells are the basic units of life. Uh, in 1838, German botanist uh, Matthias Schleinden concluded that all plants were made of cells. And the next year, Theodore Schwann stated that all animals were made of cells. And then in 1855, German physician Rudolf Virchow concluded that new cells could only be produced from the division of existing cells. So the th cell theory states all living units are composed of cells, and cells are the basic units of structure and function in living things, and new cells are produced from existing cells. Okay, exploring the cell. So with the new technology, we uh, have uh, gotten new information about cells. With the invention of the electron microscope, we are capable of revealing details as much as a thousand times smaller than those visible under a light microscope. And so the electron microscope produces 3D scans with an electron beam, and uh, this produces, so uh, this allows scientists to see down almost uh, to the atomic level. And then, however, the sample must be in a vacuum with an electron microscope, so we cannot uh, uh, look at living things. It has to be dead uh, material. And then the scanning probe microscopes have made it possible to observe single atoms, scan DNA, and protein molecules. So those are what are used today. Okay, prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. So there are two main broad categories of cells, and this depends on whether they contain or do not contain a nucleus. And a nucleus is a large membrane enclosed structure that contains the cell's genetic information in the form of DNA, and it controls many of the cell's activities. So prokaryotes are generally smaller and simpler than eukaryotic cells. They have genetic material, but it's not stored in the nucleus. As you can see, it is just stored in the uh, center of the cell called the nucleoid. And some examples of prokaryotes are bacteria. And these, they still grow, reproduce, and respond to environments. It's just that they're much simpler than eukary eukaryotic cells. So eukaryotes. So eukaryotes are generally larger and more complex than prokaryotes, as we said before. And eukaryotic cells do contain a nucleus in which their genetic information is separated from the rest of the cell. Here we can see the genetic, the nucleus, uh, which is where all the genetic information is stored in the form of chromatin. Okay. Uh, euk eukaryotic cell structure. So. We're going to go through all the organ, most of the organelles of a eukaryotic cell. And to uh, help explain this, we're going to compare the cell to a factory. So uh, first off, the organelles are structures found in cells, and it means little organs. They're basically organs for the cells. They perform uh, many different activities that help the cell function. And so the cell is divided into two major parts. The nucleus, which we can see is the pink here, and the cytoplasm, which is the gray-green uh, liquid surrounding the nucleus. Okay, the nucleus. So it helps to think of the nucleus as the main office as of the factory. It contains nearly all the cell's DNA and with the DNA uh, coded instructions for making proteins and other important molecules. So the nucleus is surrounded by a nuclear envelope, which we can see here, and um, that it's a dual membrane uh, and dotted with nuclear pores, which allow materials to move in and out of the uh, nucleus. And we can see the nuclear pores are the orange uh, circle-like things on the uh, envelope. So the granular material is chromatin. We can see that here. And chromatin it consists of DNA bound to protein. And then when the cell divides, chromatin will condense to form chromosomes, and these distinct thread-like structures contain the gen genetic information that is passed from one generation of cells to the next. And here we see the nucleolus. The nucleolus is the small, dense region where the assembly of ribosomes begin. 
Okay, next we have the ribosomes. Ribosomes are the floor machines of the factory. They assemble the proteins. And here uh, we can see the messenger RNA, which is the coded instruction for uh, assembling the proteins. So ribosomes are small small particles of RNA and protein found throughout the cytoplasm. They produce proteins following coded instructions on the mRNA that come from the nucleus. Okay, next we have the endoplasmic reticulum, also known as the ER. So it is an internal membrane system, and the ER is the site where lipid compounds of the cell membrane are assembled, along with proteins and other materials that are exported from the cell. So rough ER which we can see here is endoplasmic reticulum that has ribosomes, uh, dot, it's dotted with ribosomes, so it contains ribosomes. And this is involved in the uh, synthesis of proteins. We know ribosomes produce proteins. And then we have the smooth ER here, so this doesn't have the ribosomes. And uh, it's a collection of enzymes that perform specialized tasks, including the synthesis of membrane lipids and the detoxification of drugs. So usually liver cells have uh, contain large amounts of ER because of smooth endoplasmic reticulum, because they're uh, involved most in drug de detoxification, while uh, we see the pancreas has uh, a lot of rough ER because it is involved in producing enzymes and proteins. Okay, next we have the Golgi apparatus. So the Golgi apparatus is the customization shop, the finishing shop of the factory. So its function is to modify, sort, and package proteins and other materials from the ER for storage in the cell or secretion outside the cell. So it puts the finishing touches on proteins before they're ready to leave the cell, and it ships them to final destinations throughout uh, or outside the cell. So here we can see the transport vesicles from the Golgi apparatus. These are filled with proteins that are then shipped all around the cell and outside the cell. Next we have the lysosomes. The lysosomes are the cleaning crew of the factory. They're small organelles filled with enzymes and they uh, digest and break down lipids, carbohydrates, and proteins. And one of their most important functions is the breaking down of organelles that are uh, no longer useful. They've, they've died or so they break those down and can recycle that into uh, nutrients. Next, we have vacuoles. So vacuoles are the storage of the factory. They're sac-like structures that store materials such as water, salts, proteins, and carbohydrates. In the plant cell, there's a large central vacuole filled with liquid, which we can see here. This is a plant cell. They're also found in unicellular organisms and some animals, and they're important for homeostasis of the cell. Homeostasis is a general balance uh, within the cell. So it can pump water in and out, uh, into the cell or out of the cell, depending on what the uh, cell needs. Next, we have the mitochondria and the chlor chloroplasts. These are the energy source, the uh, the energy source for the factory. So mitochondria uh, is um, is uh, contained in ev nearly all eukaryotic cells, including plant cells. And they're organelles that convert the chemical energy stored in food into compounds that are more convenient for the cell to use. So down into simple sugars and uh, carbohydrates, they convert carbohydrates down into simple sugars. So um, they're enclosed by a dual membrane system, the outer and inner system. And uh, mitochondria are passed down from the ovum or the egg. So that means all the mitochondria in your body are passed down from your mother. And next we have the chloroplasts. So plants and some other organisms contain chloroplasts. They're organelles that capture the energy from sunlight and convert it into chemical energy using a process called photosynthesis, which we'll be discussing in chapter eight. And uh, they're the biological equivalent of solar power plants. And inside each chloroplast, there's uh, the thylakoids, which are the single discs, the granum, which is a uh, full stack of thylakoids, the stroma, which is the uh, outsides of the thylakoids, and then the lumen, which is the inside of the thylakoids. And we'll go into more of the chloroplast in the next chapter. So they actually contain their own genetic information, which led to the theory that they may be descendant from independent organisms, which is known as the endosymbiotic theory. And that'll also be discussed in a later chapter. Okay, next, the cytoskeleton. So the cytoskeleton is a support structure and transportation system. Uh, it is a network of protein filaments that help the cell to maintain its shape, and it's also involved in movement. 
So there are two main types of cytoskeleton. The microfilaments, which are thread-like structures made of a protein called actin, and they produce a tough, flexible framework, framework excuse me, that supports the cell, and this also helps the cell move through assembly and disassembly. So that is when we see an amoeba or a unicellular organism uh, appear to crawl across a surface, it is actually uh, assemb disassembling itself and reassembling its uh, microfilaments to allow it to move. Then we have microtubules. So these are hollow structures made up of proteins called tubulins, and they play a critical role in maintaining cell shape. They form the uh, the mitotic cradle, which helps separate the chromosomes during cell division. And they also form centrioles, which help organize cell division in animal cells. So these also build projections from the cell wall. So these projections are known as cilia and flagella, and these allow the cell to move through uh, uh, different means. Okay, that's it for the first part. Uh, part two will contain sections 7-3 and 7-4.